Hi, I'm Mike Tarosia with another ESBC update, and we're here today at the New Marathon School. We're going to take a little tour outside, inside, see where we're at, see what's left, and uh, learn about where where all the money has gone so far and all the work that has been done at this beautiful school. All right, Michael. Uh, over here to your right, my left, is the main entrance to the school. Uh, there's, a, there's a structure that goes on the outside that's not there yet that will provide weather protection for coming in. Um, people that come and approach the school will, will do a buzzer at the outside edge and people here in the main administration office will let the people in. Uh, there'll be another uh, wall of windows and doors right at this point. Um, as you get back into this space, as you can see, the high elevated space, you can see up to the second floor, and you can see all the way down to the end, that's the school bus entrance. That's where the kids will come in and leave for the school buses. Off to the left from the school bus entrance is the gym, the cafetorium. Off to the right, is the pre-K and kindergarten wing, the first and second floors. Um, the first grade and also kindergarten are on the wings that are behind us, and we'll get to see that in a minute. Uh, upstairs is the library, uh, and the nurse's station is over here, and um, you know it's been an exciting project, and you can see or get a real good appreciation of how much has gone into it as we go around. This is a typical pre-K classroom. Uh, you can see the entrance back here behind me. And as you enter to your left, you see the wires coming out of the wall and some piping. There'll be two sinks on that wall, plus all the storage cabinetry for classroom supplies. Uh, over on this side uh, is the uh, bathroom. So each pre-K and each kindergarten classroom has a dedicated bathroom uh, extending off the classroom. Over on this side, we have some uh, teaching preparation space. And as you can see uh, on this side, we have the windows facing the uh, woods and the bus entrance. And over here is you see a doorway to the next classroom. All the classrooms in this wing are connected uh, via a door between each classroom. If you recall at Center School, uh, we have lots of classrooms with um, limited storage space and lots of window space, almost floor to ceiling, uh, not a lot of room for exhibiting artwork and things like that. And you can see in these classrooms, they were designed with the actual use of these grades in mind, uh, offering ample space for display of student work and other uh, uh, exhibits that are related to the educational program in the classroom. Everything you see here is a result of collaboration amongst uh, the committee, the school department staff, town hall staff, uh, as far as the specifics in the classrooms, of course, we rely heavily on the school professional staff, uh, Principal Lauren DeBow and Kathy McLeod, as well as others in the school department. Uh, we've held a series of user group meetings, which is the specialists from each part of the building, providing feedback to the design uh, team and the construction team throughout the process. They've been going on for over a year now. Uh, so through that process, we've gotten lots of great feedback uh, from the professionals who will actually use the space. Ultimately, everything uh, gets vetted through the professionals on the project team uh, who've got experience with other projects and uh, bring that to us, as well as the elementary school building committee. The um, blue wires that you see in here are all, uh, it makes great spaghetti. Uh, it's low voltage wiring uh, that's run throughout the, the entire facility. Uh, we're standing right near one of the IDF rooms uh, for the building uh, and through these wires eventually we'll be carrying uh, data and other uh, building information uh, that keeps this facility up and running and running in a smooth manner. All right, Michael, uh, here we are in the gymnasium. Um, the, the gymnasium, this one's just slightly bigger than the one at Center School. Uh, there's a hardwood floor. It's a uh, as I recall, a maple strip floor, similar to what you have at most gymnasiums, the same thing we have at the high school. Um, we have two exits directly to the outside that are behind me in each corner. Uh, there, there will be six basketball nets set up pretty much the same way as Santa School and, and the high school because it is anticipated this space will be used a lot after hours by uh, adult groups as well as the kids. 
Um, the entire surface gets painted. Right now it's kind of dark because it's concrete block, but the block gets sealed, it gets painted. The entire ceiling gets painted, the ductwork gets painted. Um, a word about the paint is we have a, um, the architectural firm has hired a person who specializes in these colors and we have a lot of colors. And the idea is to have kind of a playful thing for the kids and, and to make it nice. Um, but the, uh, this room, as you can see, because it's so big, has been a place where everybody wants to store their stuff and assemble their stuff. You can see a lot of ductwork that's going to go be installed elsewhere in the house and a lot of pipe hangers and all this kind of material. But um, this is, this is, you know, this room doesn't have a finished ceiling. That what you see is the ceiling. The light fixtures you see on the ceiling are the finished light fixtures. And a word about that, all the lights within the school are LED. Uh, to obviously to conserve uh, energy, but also to have a long life. This is pretty much the gymnasium. Um, to the rear, where we'll go next, is the uh, cafeteria and the stage area. Mike, I'm standing here in the music room. Uh, you can see uh, behind me the space that we'll use for music classes. Uh, in front of me here will be a movable wall uh, that's sound rated, so it will create a sound barrier during the times the cafeteria is being used as a cafeteria. Uh, I say that because right in front of me is the cafeteria. Uh, so you can imagine uh, for parent nights, etc., these doors to the music room would be opened. What's currently a music room would become a stage for those occasions, and uh, these doors would open up the stage area to seating that would be in the cafeteria space. So the architects call this a cafetorium because it's a dual use space. Uh, key things to keep in mind, it's a full service music classroom with sound rated movable walls uh, and a performance stage uh, for the, the occasions when it will be used as such. Uh, you can see over on this side uh, an arched uh, window space. Uh, that looks out onto the playing fields. Uh, there'll be a progression of play space from close to the building until you get to the green uh, field space. And uh, it creates a real nice kind of open feeling in the cafeteria with sunlight uh, coming in as well. And in front of me here where all the storage boxes are right now uh, is where the tables will be set up uh, for the students, for the children to have their lunch. And behind you there is the food prep uh, kitchen area. As we exit the cafetorium through this door, uh, we come out into a play space. Again, it's kind of a progression of uh, varied surface until we reach the grass field on the, on the other side. Uh, if you look over to your right, uh, you see an entranceway. This is actually the other side. Uh, within there is the main entrance area to the school that we showed before. Uh, so this will be the door the students would use to come outside to recess or re-enter the building. As you go down to the right, uh, these, this is the main uh, kindergarten and first grade classroom wing. So the, the first floor is the kindergarten classrooms and the second floor will be the first grade classrooms. And if you look down towards the end, uh, you'll recall back in January 2017, uh, we came back with uh, enhanced enrollment numbers and uh, the town graciously approved four additional classrooms. Those were seamlessly integrated into the wing that you see on the far right. Uh, the design allows for the addition of an additional four classrooms uh, designed into the space beyond the building on the right. One of the key criteria we used way back when we were evaluating sites was to find a site that offered room for potential future expansion. As we're dealing with a period of unpredictable enrollment numbers, uh, we wanted to choose a space that offered that flexibility. And as you can see at the end of the building, we have that, that space designed in. We are in the electrical room now. Uh, the, the power from the street comes up underground along the, through the driveway around the building to the back corner. Uh, once it comes through the back to the back corner of the building, it goes through a transformer and then comes in inside and it starts off into this section of the, of the switch gear. Uh, this is our main breaker for the building. Once the power goes through this main breaker, it comes over to, the, to this uh, next sub panel and it's distributed around the building to the various uh, local uh, electric rooms that we have uh, for powering all of these systems throughout the building. 
So ideally, what happens is, should, should somebody trip a breaker at some point during the day, then they don't have to come into this room. They, they deal with that right at a local, much lower power uh, electric room. The people that care about this room are gonna be, uh, you know, your electricians if you're making a major modification to the facility, or, uh, or if you need to isolate like a wing for some reason. Uh, that's when they would come into this room to uh, operate one of these uh, breakers. And if there is a power failure from the street, there's an emergency generator along with the facility that's going to be resting on this pad right here. Uh, it will electrically feed underground into the building. It gets its uh, power supply from the gas um, that comes up right over here and also beside me is the uh, generator unit itself that will uh, generate the power that uh, that we use in an emergency situation. Michael we're out back here the, the business part of the school right to my right your left is the loading dock uh, the trash containers will go on one side it will be all screened in uh, this is the back of the cafeteria and this is where most deliveries will be done to the school this is the only school by the way that actually has a loading dock in town uh, over to the right, uh, the green, lovely looking area, it's being uh, watered as we speak, uh, is the playing field. Uh, it's all installed, it's sawed, they're keeping it wet so it, you know, to promote the growth. Um, between here and the field is the playground and it's just outside of the cafetorium. Uh, further to the right, you can see they're working on the road that goes between uh, the school and EMC Park. Um, all the kids uh, during recess and playing at the school will play in this area. Uh, but um, after school hours, the, the park will be accessible and the people from the park can access the school from there as well. No driving, just walking. Um, but it was meant to be open and be used by everybody. So this is the business end of the school, the back. We're standing in the boiler room right now and, and we do have some piping already installed in this area along with, with some of the equipment. But what we're looking at right here are isometric views of the piping that's going to be installed in the boiler room uh, that's gonna bring the hot water uh, around throughout the entire facility to keep everybody warm and toasty during the winter time. I'm standing between the boilers right at the moment each one of these is a gas-fired boiler uh, that will generate hot water for the heating system. The way the, the, way the system works is that uh, the heat is generated from the boilers that are directly behind you. Uh, there's two of them in, on this arrangement. And then they move the hot water coming off the boiler into these circulating water pumps. And what they'll do is they will, there's a, what we refer in the industry as a lead and a lag pump. Um, where they will alternate running and they will pump the hot water throughout the building um, that provides the heat throughout the building. All right, Michael, great tour. Where are we at now? We're, we're at about 60% finished for the school. Um, right, the, they're trying to get most of the outside. We're at the end of October. They're trying to get a lot of the outside stuff buttoned up. As you can see, we've got the playing fields done. They're working on the sidewalks. The windows are all in. We have temporary heat. Uh, so the next four or five months, the guys will be all working inside, finishing up the inside. So in the spring, ideally, we'll have a lot of this stuff has already been done and we'll be right on target to get in the school. The good thing is, and we got to this point, we're all excited about it because we've got a great project team. Uh, Compass Project Management has been great. Uh, Col Antonio, the builder, has been super. He's hired great subs. Everybody has been on time. We're pretty much on budget, and we're in really, really good shape, and I'm excited about it. All right, Joe, uh, the big question in town now is are we going to be ready for September 2018? Mike, as uh, Mike Shepard just mentioned, uh, we, we've seen great progress over the last uh, several months. Uh, the, the project team's really come together. We're definitely uh, tracking on schedule for uh, June, July 2018 completion, which gives the school department time over the summer to uh, do the final touch-ins and move equipment in and all of that, which the planning for is already underway now. 
Uh, so again, I, I want to echo Mike's uh, praise and thanks to the extended project team. Uh, you can tell by the quality of the work you see inside, the, the level of pride that they brought to their work and the quality that has resulted. So thanks to Colin Antonio, to Compass, our project manager team, to DRA Architects, and to the Hopkinton community. And special thanks to HCAM for providing these kind of updates to the community. Thank you. Mm -hmm.